25 million people continue to be exposed to asbestos in the workplace. So there's a big cost to you using asbestos in dollars and lives. Research that goes into these decisions has to be directed by independent, unconflicted scientists. It's not something that just affects workers, it affects everyone. Saving one life is great, but saving many more is what I hope to accomplish. Making a profit off of people's pain and lives is wrong. We can't quit, not as long as there are hundreds of thousands of people still to be diagnosed. Ban the asbestos once and for all. Next, we got Robert Sussman, former EPA Deputy Administrator, Adjunct Professor at the Georgetown University Law Center and Principal at Sussman & Associates. Good afternoon to all of you. It's, it's a, a pleasure and honor to be here. Before I get started, I, I want to thank some of the sponsors of this program, uh, uh, particularly uh, Motley Rice and the two other, two other law firms who are uh, uh, helping to make this possible. And I, I know ADO appreciates that, and, and I certainly appreciate that. Um, I want to shift gears now and uh, talk about regulation law and legislation. Uh, we are at a critical moment uh, for asbestos disease prevention in this country. Uh, U.S. policymakers face a moment of truth. Uh, will they do the right thing? Will they step up? Uh, will they address this issue effectively? Those are the, the, the urgent questions, I think, that we're facing today. Um, let me just set the scene uh, by, uh, if, if you will, encapsulating uh, where we are on asbestos in this year, uh, 2019, and why uh, all of you will agree that our work is, is not done. Uh, first, there is some good news. Asbestos is no longer mined in the United States. Uh, Canada, which was once a very large producer, has banned asbestos. Uh, many asbestos, <laughs> many, many asbestos-containing products are no longer in use and uh, in commerce, and, and at least in, in the developed world, in, in Europe and the United States, uh, there is a strong scientific consensus that asbestos uh, poses an urgent health threat. Um, now let's, let's look at the bad news. I'm afraid that there's more bad news than, uh, than good news here. Uh, first, as you've probably heard, the, uh, the death toll from asbestos in the United States is 40,000 uh, Americans annually. Uh, the death rate is, is holding steady. Uh, we are not seeing uh, asbestos-related mortality uh, decline. Um, we know that no amount of asbestos is safe, and yet, uh, as you just heard, there are millions of schools, residences, commercial buildings, factories, and public buildings that contain asbestos. Uh, there is also a very substantial amount of asbestos that is moving uh, in commerce as waste in this country. Uh, the latest report of the toxic release inventory uh, indicated that over 20 million pounds of asbestos uh, is released to soil each year, either at landfills uh, or, in many cases, at chemical manufacturing facilities who were managing the asbestos uh, on site. Uh, there's more bad news, and you've heard this today as, as, as well. Uh, uh, Surprisingly, and, and, and certainly a shock when I came to fully appreciate it myself, 
mining importation and virtually all uses of asbestos are lawful uh, in the United States. And that's something which many people find hard to grasp, but unfortunately it's, it's reality, it's, it's truth. Um, imports of raw asbestos, uh, mainly by the chloralkali industry, are increasing. Um, uh, and uh, they show no sign of, uh, of, of, of diminishing. Uh, it appears that the, the industry in the United States is stockpiling asbestos uh, and therefore increasing imports in anticipation of the possible loss of Brazil as an asbestos supplier. Uh, and then, apart from raw asbestos, uh, there are a number of asbestos-containing products that are uh, uh, continuing to come into the United States uh, and have been documented. This is, includes asbestos brake linings, tile, wallboard, woven fabric, cement, uh, gaskets, and surprisingly and disturbingly, we do not know the quantities of these products that are coming into the country. We don't know who is using them, we don't know where they are going, and we don't know who is exposed. Uh, finally, uh, we have uh, asbestos uh, contamination in talc-based products uh, like baby powder, makeup, uh, and crayons, which are widely used by consumers. Again, we don't know how many of these products are out there, but every time we look, uh, we seem to find asbestos uh, contamination. And then just briefly, around the world, uh, there, there is uh, a strong backlash against the elimination of asbestos from countries that continue to mine uh, large quantities of asbestos uh, and are seeking to expand markets in the developing world. And these countries, uh, uh, shockingly, uh, continue to claim that chrysotile asbestos is safe uh, and can be used uh, without any restriction. So you may ask why is asbestos not banned in the United States? Uh, and the answer is the longtime failure of the Toxic Substances Control Act uh, which is the main law enacted by Congress for uh, the evaluation and management of hazardous chemicals. Uh, EPA, in fact, put in place a ban on asbestos in 1989, uh, and it looked like asbestos would soon be eliminated from U.S. commerce, uh, but EPA's ban uh, was blocked by a court uh, in a case filed by the asbestos industry in 1991. And at that point, EPA threw up its hands for the next uh, 25 years. And, and interestingly, EPA's inability to use this law to ban asbestos became a poster child for how the law was broken and uh, needs to be fixed. So in 2016, uh, the law was in fact uh, fixed by Congress, uh, and EPA now has greater authority for chemical risk evaluations and risk-based regulation. Asbestos is a test case to demonstrate the effectiveness of the new law. It was picked by EPA in 2016 as one of the first 10 substances to undergo a comprehensive uh, risk evaluation, and at that point, uh, ADAO and, and others uh, applauded because it finally looked like EPA was back in gear uh, after 20 years of throwing up its hand. Uh, but we, uh, we celebrated too soon, uh, and in the two and a half years since EPA started this uh, risk evaluation, uh, we have been very disappointed by uh, what we are seeing from the agency and would say that EPA is not on track to ban asbestos 
because its risk evaluation is ignoring, and I will tick these off, exposure to legacy asbestos in the built environment. EPA says uh, they don't have the legal authority to address legacy asbestos. Uh, we disagree with that. We're fighting EPA in court, but EPA is digging in their heels and saying legacy is not our issue. Um, EPA is not looking at all the cancers uh, that are linked to asbestos. For example, they're not looking at ovarian cancer. Uh, they're also not looking at airborne asbestos in the environment. Uh, they're not looking at disposal of legacy asbestos, which, as we all know, uh, is a very significant activity. Uh, they are not looking at Libby Amphibol. They say that that is outside their definition of asbestos. Uh, and they're also not looking at the consumer products that I just mentioned, which are contaminated uh, with asbestos, even though uh, they know that the evidence shows that asbestos contaminated consumer products are coming into the country. Uh, the firefighters asked EPA to treat firefighters as a vulnerable population, uh, which under the law is entitled to special protection, uh, but EPA said no to that. Uh, they declined the request of the firefighters uh, to be treated as a vulnerable population. Um, we have also uh, seen from EPA a proposed uh, significant new use rule. There's a lot of controversy around this rule. Uh, EPA has touted it as protection against asbestos risk, but uh, in, in this case, the emperor simply has no, no clothes. Uh, the rule simply requires industry to inform EPA uh, before certain discontinued asbestos products are reintroduced at EPA can at that point then decide that these products are acceptable and should be allowed back into commerce. I want to emphasize the SNR is no substitute for permanently eliminating asbestos exposure. How else is EPA dropping the ball? Uh, this, this involves information. We heard about the importance of knowing uh, where asbestos is being used and who is being exposed, what the amounts are. EPA has refused to require industry to report on asbestos importation and use. Uh, first of all, asbestos is exempt from the EPA reporting rules that apply to thousands of chemicals. So reporting on asbestos is not required. Um, EPA admits in the problem formulation for their risk evaluation that they do not know how much asbestos is entering the U.S. and where and how it is used. ADAO asked EPA through a petition under TSCA uh, to require reporting on asbestos imports and use. Uh, EPA said no. Uh, now, uh, following in our wake, 15 state attorney generals are also petitioning EPA to require reporting on asbestos. We are, we are in court in California, uh, suing EPA, challenging their denial of our petition, and we believe that the state attorney generals will be standing with us in that courtroom very soon. So let me turn to uh, the Arban legislation, because uh, uh, the reason for this Arban legislation is closely connected to EPA's uh, failure to do the right thing under, under TSCA. If EPA was doing its job, we might not need this legislation, uh, but EPA is not doing its job, and the legislation is therefore uh, absolutely essential.
The legislation was introduced on March 7, 2019. Uh, it has uh, a stellar group of sponsors and co-sponsors, uh, including Representative Pallone, who is the chair of the Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, it has a long list of endorsers, uh, and it is a significant uh, piece of legislation that is receiving significant attention, at least in the House of Representatives. I'm gonna tick off very quickly, because I know my, my time is running out, uh, the highlights of the bill. Um, this bill would uh, achieve a complete and rapid end to all asbestos imports and use within a year. The ban would apply to all types of asbestos, and that includes Libby Amphibor. It would be fine. Finally, we would have meaningful right to know reporting. Um, EPA would receive complete information on the amounts of asbestos and asbestos containing products entering the U.S. and how and where they're used. Uh, and finally, uh, this legislation would require a comprehensive study and evaluation of the risks associated with legacy exposure and recommendations for how we can change the laws that are in place, the policies, and the requirements so we can effectively address uh, legacy risks. So this is important legislation. It would take us very far down the road if it's enacted. And my takeaway message is now is the time uh, to hammer home uh, the importance of this legislation and, and enacting it. Uh, and that involves first holding EPA's feet to the fire under Tosca pushing back on the EPA risk evaluation, opposing the stir, challenging the failure to address legacy exposure, advocating right to know, and then it involves pushing to enact our ban in this Congress. Thank you.